I think we're starting. Hello, everybody, and uh, happy happy Juneteenth. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, sort of as a Juneteenth uh, uh, general theme. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Lieber Lieber Oz and um, the Declaration of the Rights of Man. Things things like that that you would think about. Uh, uh, on a on a day like today, uh, so we're going to talk about Crowley's Lieber Oz and my words uh, that uh, I penned a few years back uh, concerning Lieber Oz, the rights of uh, man, and and uh, in Thelema, as it relates to Thelema in general, because there's so much misunderstanding. Uh, either uh, accidental misunderstanding or purposeful misunderstanding of Crowley's uh, 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 wonderful declaration of the rights of man called Lieber Oz. And, uh, but I want to first start off by saying that uh, magical aeons, now we're, the Thelemic point of view is that we're in a new magical aeon. That, uh, there's a new formula. It's how, it's how uh, 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 mankind in general, or humanity in general, uh, excuse me if I fall back into my geriatric uh, uh, habits. Mankind in general, okay, has, has a new universal point of view. Uh, and uh, at the very bottom of it is our is our general acceptance of the fact that uh, uh, the the sun doesn't go down and come up; <laughs> it stays stays on all the time, which is uh, almost uh, has a direct reflection on how we view ourselves and our own sense of uh, being, our own sense of immortality, the own our own sense of uh, uh, what we used to think of as, uh, uh, oh, I have to die and, and uh, uh, go to heaven where I'll be judged either, you know, rewarded with, you know, treats or, or uh, punished. Okay, it's not that, it's not that at all. That's not where, our, that's not who we are. We're not something that goes on and off. If we're on right now, we've always been on, we'll always be on just like the sun is always on it. Okay. So, uh, so, so we've stepped out of that old way of looking at things and we're in a new magical formula where, where deep down inside, whether we uh, admit it rationally or not, that's how we, that's how we view reality. Okay. Magical aeons, and the formula of magical aeons, but, uh, Magical aeons are like geologic ages. Everyone must live and function in the current environment. Everyone. It doesn't matter if you choose to believe that you're in the Ice Age. You're still going to have to learn to build a fire if you're going to survive, okay? You can deny your, <laughs> our ancestors could deny, oh, I don't believe in the Ice Age. I, you know, I, I'm, give me that old time religion when we had uh, dinosaurs and tropical plants, you know. It doesn't matter. It's for everyone. Here's what I had to say. Uh, well, first of all, here's Lieber Oz. It was done late in Crowley's life. It's not a class A document or a B or a C or a th no, it's a, it's a statement by the man Alistair Crowley himself. Okay, we can comment on this all, all we want. We can interpret it any, any way you want. It's just, this is what Crowley said. And he had some quotes from the Book of the Law uh, in it, which are class A, and we don't tinker with those. But it's just, uh, 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 man has the right to live by his own law, to do this, do that. Man has the right to do... Okay, uh, the reason I'm not going to read the whole thing is because I'm going to read another version of it. Uh, 
So here's what I had to say. Starts off, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And my opening line is, Liber Oz has no class. Meaning, as a document. We're all aware that most printed versions of the text of Liber Oz, Crowley inserted seven quotes from the Book of the Law, which are the, the law of the strong, this is our law and the joy of the world, do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law, thou hast no right but to do thy will, do that and no other shall say nay, every man and every woman is a star, take your fill and will of love as ye will, when, where, and with whom ye will, he added this one, the slaves shall serve. And love is the law, love under will. These insertions, just like I said a second ago, these insertions are class A's. So of course, we'll never tinker with class A material. But the actual text of Oz is not class A. Liber Oz is not one of the works, and here's the different kinds of class uh, uh, distinctions. It's not one of the works that may not be changed so much as the style of a letter. And it, it doesn't represent the utterance of an adept beyond criticism. I think that's class B. Because it's not class A, Libra Oz stands exposed to honest analysis, comment, and criticism. Be that as it may, I'm going to do my best not to unduly sway anyone to my personal biases or philosophies or any of my geriatric hippie-born sociological sensibilities. But just for fun, because we're not talking Class A, I presumptuously performed uh, a little surgery on the text of Libra Oz to bring it up to what I think is an even clearer way of saying it. And then I did a, a version where it says, uh, woman has the right to do this, woman has, but even better than that. Because that doesn't take care of everything either. And as a Thelemite, this is what how I read Liber Oz. There is no God but me. I have the right to live by my own law, to live in the way that I will to do, to work as I will, to play as I will, to rest as I will, to die when and how I will. I have the right to eat what I will, to drink what I will, to dwell where I will, to move as I will on the face of the earth. I have the right to think what I will, to speak what I will, to write what I will, to draw, paint, carve, etch, mold, build as I will, to dress as I will. And the last one, which everybody always understandably has a problem with, at least at first, I have the right to love as I will, take your fill and will of love as ye will, when, where, and with whom ye will, and I have the right to kill those who would thwart these rights. And it's signed by Aleister Crowley. Very late in his life. Not the, not the young, brash Aleister Crowley, but the Aleister Crowley that's had some time to think about this stuff. Liber Oz is not a Class B document. It's not an essay as a result of ordinary scholarship. It's not a Class C document, which is composed of matter to be regarded as suggestive. It's, uh, it isn't listed as an AA ritual. So it's not Class D either. I was surprised to learn that Liber Oz is not even listed among the Class E documents that consists of public announcements and broadsheets. Liber Oz is simply signed Alistair Crowley. 
not Frater Perdurabo, not Ankoff and Kansu, not OM, not 666, not OSV, not VVVVV, not Tomegatheria. Liber Oz was written and signed by the man, Aleister Crowley, a man declaring the rights of man. Crowley labels Liber Oz and hit, quote, an historic document, unquote, and tells us that it was, quote, meant to convey the OTO plan in words of one syllable, unquote. I'm sure we could uh, debate a little over exactly how to interpret OTO plan, but for a concise and authoritative statement of the OTO plan, we might turn to Section 2 of the revised 1917 Constitution, which tells the world simply the principal purpose of the OTO is to teach true brotherhood and to make it a living power in the life of humanity. To teach true brotherhood and make it a living power, a living power in the life of humanity. As such, Liber Oz appears to be intended for each and every man, woman, and child upon earth. Liber Oz is not just for OTO members. It's not just for brothers or brothers of or aspirants to AA. Liber Oz is not a message just for self-proclaiming Thelemites, not just for magicians. Liber Oz is the declaration of the rights of each and every human being whose evolving consciousness has developed a sense of self and whose self-identity has formulated a will. Liber Oz in its present form was written in 1941. Just seven years later, on December 10, 1948, the nations of the earth were still convulsing from the catastrophe of World War II. United Nations representatives from around the world formally adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's a document I believe everyone, especially you, should own and study. If you don't have one at this event, I brought one for everybody. It's just a little, tiny little pamphlet. It's an inspiring little document worthy, in my opinion, of universal acceptance. It's remarkably thorough, declaring in 30 brief articles a broad spectrum of economic, social, cultural, political, and civil rights of all people on our planet. But it's important to remember, for the, especially for those of us who claim to be Thelemites, that ultimately is patently impossible for the United Nations or any community, state, or national government to grant anyone these rights. No charter, no constitution, no warrant or document of any kind has the power or authority to award or grant anyone these rights. No. We possess these rights the instant we recognize and accept the fact that they are ours by virtue of being born, by the virtue of being alive, by the virtue 
of existing in this dimension as human beings. These rights can't be purchased, can't be rationed, doled out, allocated, or, allo or allotted to us by any particular cult's imaginary god or by some vaporous special privileges we've inherited because of the circumstances of our wealth, our race, our genes, our family or tribe or nation. These rights aren't privileges extended to us by some international or interplanetary government or club. Speaking Thelemite to Thelemite, hopefully, I'll be perfectly frank. If you believe that any organization or entity outside yourself has the power to grant or deny you any of these rights, then perhaps you're not ready and prepared to claim and exercise them. I'll go even further. If you believe there is an entity outside yourself capable of granting or withholding any of these rights from you, then perhaps you're not yet prepared and ready to claim and exercise them. Until you've awakened, yes, awakened, Until you've awakened to your true nature, your drowsing consciousness will continue to divide dream self against dream self. You'll continue to hoodwink yourself and remain self-bound and self-medicated. You'll continue to bamboozle yourself into ignoring your birthright as Godhead and only continue to imagine that you've transcended the flat earth, dying sun, divine right of king, slave consciousness of the Osirian Aeon. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a fine attempt at idealistically enshrining what the rights of man might look like if ever they were put into practice by motivated people and institutions guided by a modicum of human decency, by a desire for evolutionary unfoldment of human potential. But Lieber Oz is a far more profound and visceral declaration. It declares why we fundamentally possess these rights. And I personally believe that as far as Libra Oz is concerned, we're free to identify ourselves as anything we sincerely believe we are, any philosophy, any political persuasion, any gender, and yes, any religion. We're even free to believe that something is truly our will even if it's against civil or criminal laws. Even if in the eyes of others it appears embarrassingly stupid, misguided, or dangerous. It does not, however, in any way free us from the consequences of stupid behavior or even stupid opinion. You're even free to believe something is truly your will, even if all your friends and loved ones think you're out of your fucking mind and you're making the biggest mistake of your life. It's not for you or me or anyone else to judge on a karmic incarnational level what truly is or is not another person's will. Who are we to judge on that huge cosmic scale. 
After all, such stupid behavior might be part of your will to die when and how you will. At the moment, I generally consider myself a bit of a radical, liberal humanist. I guess the polite term in today's American political scene is progressive or democratic socialist. So is Constance and quite a few of our friends, but certainly not all of our friends in and out of the OTO and magical communities. I can't speak for Constance or any of our friends, but my motives are cold heartedly selfish and fit quite nicely in my personal understanding of the law of Philema. You may think I'm completely naive and deluded, but I don't care. For whatever reasons, it's clear to me that I have a number of unique and particularly important things I must do with my life in the time I have in this dimension. Things for the benefit of my own consciousness and for the benefit of the consciousness of others in this dimension with whom I come in contact. Call it destiny, call it my great work, call it ego, call it madness. I don't give a shit what anyone calls it. I've come to the conclusion that it is my private personal, selfish, self-centered, narcissistic best interest to live and pursue my great work in a relatively safe, healthy, stable community environment. Undisturbed and unencumbered by violent social unrest. Part of my pursuit of happiness includes not being surrounded, distracted, or menaced by hungry, unhappy, diseased, unemployed, homeless, downtrodden, resentful human beings. Maybe it's a character flaw. But I cannot segregate their consciousness from my own. It unsettles me. It irritates me. It makes me unhappy to know such fellow centers of consciousness are currently unable to develop their own unique and particularly important things they must do. It's particularly unsettling to me to think that there might be things I can do myself that might address and correct the situation. Doing what I can to ease and correct the conditions in the space-time environment we all share is the least I can do. And I believe it's one of the unique and particularly important things I must do with the time I have in this incarnation. But that's just my life, my will. You are and you must be your own center of consciousness. In the OTO and ultimately in Thelema, one's individual politics are entirely a personal matter. They have to be. In my opinion, there can't be a true Thelemic political party unless the platform is to encourage its membership to vote for whomever they personally prefer and support the programs they personally agree with. Anything else would be like saying, we believe there is no law beyond do what thou wilt, and we want a law to make you believe that too. It's profoundly understandable that many individuals who embrace the Lima's philosophy of personal liberty would want to live in an environment that allows them and all others the maximum degree of this freedom. But as Thelemites, we know, or, or we should know, that no environment is capable of granting or withholding these rights. No government is capable of granting or withholding these rights. No army or police force or court or prophet, priest, king or OHO is capable of granting 
or withholding these rights. And if we truly believe we are Thelemites, then there should never be a shadow of a doubt in our minds that this freedom is already ours. By virtue of our will to consciously seize and affirm that it's our birthright. For Constance and me, it feels perfectly natural to support laws, measures, candidates, and parties that promote policies that support e e equality and strong civil liberties and such. But our progressive attitudes aren't dictated by the Reaper Oz. Our interpretation, it's not even our interpretation of the tenets of Thelema. Our personal attitudes are unique to us. Perhaps they spring from our youthful idealism or the romantic attitudes we, we've formed and have clung to throughout our long and adventurous life together. Perhaps they're simply formed by our observations and interpretations of what appears to be, to us, objective reality. And from what we believe is mature wisdom and our sense of human decency. You may find our attitudes admirable or childishly naive, but please, if you disagree with our positions on social or political issues, do not be quick to blame our flaws on our acceptance or our understanding of the Lima. The same should be remembered of our brothers and sisters with whom we share so many other wonderful things in common concerning the art of magic and the great work, but whose political views we may find abhorrent. Always remember each of us have attitudes and pathologies that have been molded by factors infinite and unknown. For some of us, they've been factors of pain or fear or trauma that none of us are truly able to understand in another. Each of us is batshit crazy in our own way. Disagree with others as vehemently as you will. Call them out and bust them honestly on social media, if you must. Sadly, in these days of political madness, things may get so bad that old friendships are destroyed. But if you must lose a brother or sister's love and friendship, Try never to let them lose your love and friendship. Such events are painful, and you can find lots of mundane causes to blame for a brother or sister's irrational attitudes. Loneliness, past history of drugs or alcohol abuse, Freudian <laughs> issues, parental trauma unhealthy fixation on guns, an addiction to power, or just old-fashioned greed. But never be tricked into blaming the transcendent nature of Thelema for something as stupid as conflicting attitudes on politics. And if someone else tries to, don't be trolled into the conversation at that level. I admire Crowley. He's my holy prophet. But I'm not obliged to comb my hair or select my wardrobe or my diet or my lovers or to vote the way he did. Thelema is bigger than Aleister Crowley. And nobody can tell you how to interpret the book of the law. And if anyone ever does, you should feel empowered to give them a hearty 
and a loving fuck you. Love is the law, love under will. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.